Are you ready? It is your time to take a few moments from your busy day to unwind, be inspired, and listen to the psychic insights of your host, Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise, a top 100 psychic, speaker, and author. Off air, be sure to connect with Hallie at HallieElise.com. And now, The Hallie Elise Show. Welcome, everyone. I hope you've had a wonderful week. Someone asked me earlier today, what was it that I was going to speak about? And I said, you know, when I don't have a guest, I kind of debate back and forth during the day, but it's usually not until about an hour beforehand that I go, hmm, okay, this is what we're going to speak about. And what's come up many times yesterday, last night, as well as today, is what did you want to be when you grew up? A funny kind of thought, because if you're already grown up, why would you think backwards? The truth is to challenge yourself, to determine, did you do the things that you wanted to do? Now, granted, a lot of children will start out with, I want to be a fireman and I want to be Superman and I want to be a policeman. And a little girl might say, I want to be a ballerina and I want to be an executive like mom and also I want to be a designer. And when you're real little and you have multiple choices, what's kind of nice about that is you believe you can be all of them. There is no doubt. There is no, somebody's going to keep me from doing it. It's not about money. It's not about education. It is simply a matter of what is it that you want to do. Now, the irony is as an adult, if you had that same enthusiasm, if you had that same motivation, if you had that same idealism, you would also believe that you could do whatever you want to do. Unfortunately, we are often sold a bill of goods. And when I say that, it's a matter of we are accustomed to believing that we can only exist in a certain way. Income is limited. The expression glass ceiling, pardon me, comes to mind. Somebody says, oh, you have to work for a living as if that's a bad thing. Other people say, oh, it's not good to own your own business. You have headaches and worries. If you have a lot of money, it's a problem. Or you look at it the other way. Money is the root to all evil. You have to give. And when you have to give, that means you have to give to a church or a synagogue or some organization that benefits other than you as an individual. Now, don't get me wrong. I truly believe that we are here to help one another, to share with each other, to give. And I actually put money away on a very consistent basis. Actually, every time money comes in, that goes towards charity. But it's not based on somebody else's number. It's based on my number. It's based on me taking a percent out and putting it aside until I feel comfortable that it's enough or it feels right. And then I make a donation. And the donation does not always go to a particular religious organization or to a particular charity. Sometimes it just goes to someone in need. If I know someone and I know they're not doing so hot financially, they have a limited amount of food in the fridge, I may give it to them. If someone has some difficulty and they don't have dog food, I may purchase dog food. If I see someone on the side of the road and it's the same person I see all the time, it might go to them. My point being, I am more than open, able, and ready to give to charity to help someone, but there is no limiting belief for me attached to it. Now, I am not at all disrespectful. You are entitled to your own belief system if it works for you. And the only reason I say it that way, we are creatures of habit. We are taught things when we're little, we're taught things when we're teens, we're taught things in our early 20s about how the world is, how it is perceived, what is going to happen and what is the expectation. What happens to that little kid inside of us that was enthusiastic, that was so enthralled with getting to that next place in their life that they could see it, they could be it, they could pretend, and they would know 
that it was true, that they could make it happen. Whether it's making a donation, whether it is charity at a huge level, as in you are a chairperson and you're donating your time as well as money, whether it is a matter of as a gift to the people that work for you, that you have a fund for those who are injured or family members that have special needs, whether it's helping a friend, it really should be up to you. The universe does not look unkindly upon someone because they're giving, but not giving to a specific area or purpose or thing. The universe looks unkindly at those who feel that they are the only person that matters. That's really the only time that the universe may not be totally happy with you. But the truth, even with that is, if there is a lesson to be learned by you or somebody who you interact with, there really is no discerning. There really is no judgment. I know that's so hard to believe because, again, we're brought up that our behavior is supposed to be a certain way, that we are to look at our lives in certain ways. And yet, most of us, excuse me, most of us today are well aware that we have the power to attract, that we have the power to design, that we are co-creators with our universe. I've mentioned many times about, I say I live in a friendly universe and my daughter teases and says, oh mom, you live in your own world. But I have to tell you, I do, I live in a friendly universe. And even when it's unfriendly, I'm still friendly. So that means my universe is friendly. I'm gonna give an example. I went somewhere the other evening to purchase something and the cashier did not make eye contact, did not smile. And I'm not even sure if they counted the money correctly, truthfully, <laughs> but they just kind of threw it at me. And I heard them saying to the other person, I'm so tired. I just don't want to be here. What do you mean you're tired? It doesn't matter if you're tired. I'm tired. And I thought, okay, they're having a bad day. Next, I'll decide, do I want to return to this place or not? That's a choice, but there's no anger. And there was no judgment. There was an acknowledgement that somebody was experiencing something that was not relevant to me other than they weren't giving me the service that I desired. And yet, later I was out somewhere and I found a quarter and then I found a dime and then I found a penny and then somebody was kind enough to open the door for me and somebody else said, hi, how are you? And someone else smiled. My friendly universe. I'm gonna do a 360 here as I often do and tell you, come back to the idea that you can have, you can create whatever it is that you want. If you are in a position at a job that you don't like, change it. And I know you're saying, oh, that's easy for you to say. You get to do what you want. And I do get to do what I want. I'm very grateful every single day, though I get to do what I want because I choose it. There is never a time that you are not without your wits meaning the ability to see beyond where you are, to look beyond your circumstance, to understand that if something is going on, you are co-creating this. And I know you're thinking, no, that's wrong. If something bad is happening in my life, how could I possibly have co-created it? It's impossible. The truth is, it's not always based on the moment. If for, let's say, months or even years, the majority of your thought processing has been on how awful life is or how difficult it is, then in most likelihood, that's what you're attracting into your world. And we're, we're going to take away the part as far as energy and just look at the mental implication. If I believe something to be true, I'm not going to look for something better. If I believe there's strife in my life, that's what I see. If I believe there's difficulty, that's what I see. And the universe shows up to say, you're absolutely right. Here you go. Here's more of the same. Sometimes we are sitting in a place and we say, but I've been meditating. I've been doing my breath work. I even have a vision board. I put up my beautiful vision board. I look at it every day. I affirm, I acknowledge. I have to ask you though, when you're doing those things, are you believing it? Are you that little kid 
looking at your vision board, truly believing it as you're looking at it. If not, then it's just a picture or pictures that are before you. You have that ability to make a difference in your world. And thing to recognize as well, it's very difficult to go from a state of discomfort to extreme comfort overnight. Oftentimes when that happens, things change again. A great example is the studies that have been done on lotto winners. The majority of them who didn't have money to start with, shortly after winning, didn't have money to end with. And it's not because they were bad, and it's not because they deserved it because they won and they shouldn't have won. It's because they had a particular mental pattern, a particular energy pattern that was familiar. And even though for a little while there was that thought of, yay, I don't have to worry, I'm abundant, I could probably guarantee that they didn't take that money and say, hmm, now how can I invest this wisely? Hmm, how can I create passive income? Hmm, how can I, and here's the ticket, how can I make this work for me? Instead it was, oh, this is mine, let's go spend. How often do we do that in other areas of our life? We have a relationship and it doesn't work out and we think about, oh, this person just did A, B, C, D, and E and they were at fault and it's them. It's not us, it's not me, it's them. We have to consider that we are accountable for all things in our world. It's not just outside, it's inside. It's always inside. We have a divine connection. We, as I said before, can co-create. That means that anything going on in our world, we are a part of. As to its appearing in our world, as to its benefiting us, or as to its ability to take away from us. I have to tell you though, if you look at something in your life that doesn't feel right, that isn't going good, Dr. John Demartini came up with a process that's phenomenal. And it has to do with recognizing that pattern, seeing it from other places. Meaning, if I look at something and think, oh, that person was mean to me. Where have I been mean in my world? Have I been mean towards somebody else? Maybe not in this moment, but have I ever been mean to somebody else? Is there anybody else on the face of the planet that could see me as mean? And if I think about it, of course there is. Now, if I start to associate a name, a time period, an incident to all those things, and I go into that place in my mind and I recognize that, I start to neutralize that charge. It's a pretty fascinating process and I'm not giving it to you in detail. This is definitely in brevity, but the idea is to become more aware. The other thing that you could do, if you want immediate change in your life and you're seeing things and you're going, my heart is just so sad, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just can't do this anymore. This being whatever this is, whether it is how you're feeling, whether it is finance, whether it's a loved one passing, whether it is a romance, whether it is weight, whether it is intelligence, job, it doesn't matter. Do you wanna change it? Here's a little something you can do immediately. Instead of an affirmation, write down why. Why you need the change. Be so clear, come up with a hundred reasons why you would benefit from that change. Then your consciousness, then your energy starts to shift. We're gonna take a brief break and when we be back, when, when we be back, that was good English, don't you think? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. When we return, I'll take some calls for readings. If you'd like to call in for a psychic reading this evening, it's 888-565-1470. And I believe we have a caller on the line. Be back in a moment. This is your empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise, one of the top 100 psychics in America. For over 30 years, I have offered psychic readings, programs, spiritual guidance, and other life skill techniques. As our lives have become more complicated, we often reach for answers. Who are we? Where are we headed? Are we pointed in the right direction? In addition, we often are concerned for our loved ones. 
I have helped thousands of people navigate their life circumstances through different modalities of spiritual and intuitive guidance. Call me at 561-755-2166 and allow me to further explain how I may assist you in clearing the path of yesterday so today and tomorrow will be a success. Call me at 561-755-2166 or visit my site HallieElise.com. That's H A L L E Y E L I S E.com. You have been listening to Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise, a top 100 psychic. She is your connection to all things spiritual, psychic, and empowering, your guide to peace and wisdom. For a private appointment off air, call 561 755 2166. Now, back to the Hallie Elise Show with Empowerment Psychic, Hallie Elise. Welcome back, everyone. For those of you watching on Facebook, on my Facebook page, I noticed real quick during the break, I have a particular gent who's putting up little photos on there or little images. I appreciate that, homie. Thanks so much. (laughs) Kind of fun to see. If you have a comment or a question and I happen to catch it on the screen, I'll be happy to answer. In the interim, I believe Rosie's on the line. And I just have to wait a moment to our gent is able to switch the call so that I can speak. Okay. Rosie? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you perfectly. Okay, how are you? I'm better. I'm in a better headspace than last time we spoke. Excellent. Yes, I enjoyed your video this morning about the fan. It was definitely was that helpful. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I was laying in bed too, and I'm like, "Oh, this is perfect. This is going to work." One of those impromptu types of things. When I looked up, I said, "Hmm, I'm going to share this." Yes. Well, those are the best moments, aren't they? Absolutely. Did you have a specific question, hon? Yes. I can only work at home, and I was wondering what you saw working out for me there. Okay. Actually, I get two choices versus just something being concrete. One having to do with creating, designing, that type of thing, and then selling something online. The other, to me, feels like it's more, I'm going to say, analytically minded, It feels as if there's the need to, okay. It reminds me of when someone does medical processing at home, but I don't feel like it's that specifically, but it would be specific in the same way in respect to you had a a format to follow. You have to put information down in a particular way when you're doing it online. But I feel like there's two options there. You could actually do both. The one oh, I was going to babysit kids. Well, that but that that's a but see that's a given, honey. Meaning babysitting the kids that you can do that with your eyes closed. I, obviously, you have to pay attention to them. I probably shouldn't say that. There's some moms listening. My point being that for mm-hmm. you, that's kind of an easy thing. You're playful. You yeah. love children. That that's a given. Yeah. But I'm saying for additional money mm-hmm. outside of that, I get there being something. Again, very particular as far as details, detail oriented, I'll say, that you can do online. So what I would suggest is taking a look at what's available for computer work from home. And I have to wonder if some of it isn't on the lines of being well, an independent where you're able to give independent information, for instance, to someone as to how to create something or how to design. For some reason, I keep coming back to that with the creativity. Weird. Yeah, I mean, I'm. He's not doing anything for me right now. I do have things online for my shop, but that's just so dead. Right, but people have to be able to find you. I know Etsy itself is a very popular type of site. I also know yeah. there's lots and lots of people on there. If you haven't shared with all of your social media on a regular basis that you're on there, it's something you may want to start considering. Okay, share more often. I can do that. Because here's the thing. I know for myself, I go on, I take a quick peek at what's there, I'm off. If I don't see what's on during that time that I'm there, 
it's a done deal. My assistant does a lot of the posts, a lot of the things for me, which means there's a lot of content I don't see. If she sees something that she feels is important or relevant, then she's going to let me know. But the same thing is true with anybody who wants to share something. It needs to be repetitive. It needs to be widespread. And what I have found truly is that people don't like to read a lot. Put something Mm -hmm. on there that catches their eye so that they will read. And these are things okay. that you You're can not really do. You're not so much of the babysitting of the kids. You're not seeing that doing so well. It's not that I don't see it doing well. I just don't. All right, this is going to sound bad, but I just don't see it being a big deal. Meaning, I feel like you can watch a couple of children, get paid for it, but be doing something else while you're doing that. And it may not be during the exact hours while you're babysitting, but as an additional source of income, as an income that has more oomph to it. Okay, computer work from home. Okay. Take a look and see because I I feel like there is something there. And again, to me, it's more analytically minded versus abstract where there's a specific pattern that you adhere to so that you can turn the the work in and then you get paid. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, and I'm going to suggest real quick, think about that. real quick here, make sure you mm-hmm. pay attention to your neck. I get a little sensitivity. It feels like one, two, three, I want to say in C3, C4. So like cervical three, four of the neck. There's a little sensitivity there. Make sure if mm-hmm. your shoulder, your neck is bothering you at all, do some very gentle stretching, but definitely do some breath work. It is. Thank you. Yeah, I've not been sleeping well, and I carry all my attention on my shoulder. <laughs> okay. Good job. Okay. So this is something that you can pay attention to, and, and you can create some ease. Just be conscious. Gently bend your ear to your shoulder. Take a deep breath. If it hurts, kind of stop midway. Then take another deep breath. See if you can't gently ease your way down. Do the other side. If need be, put your hand behind your neck for support. Bend the head back in the same sort of fashion. But it just okay. feels to me that there needs to be more flexibility there, and the breath mm-hmm. would be very helpful. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're Have very welcome. Have a great night. Thanks for calling. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. We have Jorky on the line, if I said that correctly. Hi. Yes. Hello, Haley. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm. I'm going through the motions. I just want to thank you for taking my call today. Um, I was going to ask you if you could possibly just let me know what you feel and what you could tell me based off what you get off the phone call. Right sure. Now. And okay. I do have one question as well, but after. Okay. What, sh- what comes up for me immediately is a lot of indecision. What comes up for me immediately is not really being happy in your own skin right now, which is a little bit disconcerting. What comes up for me immediately is the feel that you need to make massive change and yet not feeling as if you have the wherewithal to do that. Correct, yeah. Okay, let me share something real quick in case you weren't listening at the very beginning of the show. I was talking about how when we're little kids and how we get excited about making change and we believe with all our heart that we can do it. Yeah. You have to start believing that you are going to be okay because you will be okay but you have to start somewhere honey you can't sit and say but i don't feel right and i just don't know what to do and do nothing and at the very least get up get outside walk around the building i don't mean to be facetious i'm really serious and when you're walking say you know what I'm being proactive. I'm doing something. I'm moving. Really make it clear to yourself that you're the one that's in charge. As soon as you do that, your consciousness and that higher aspect of yourself starts to connect at a deeper level. And you'll find that ideas start to come in that weren't there before to kind of affirm the direction that you should be going in. And I have to tell you, you, go ahead. how uh, How would you deal with someone in your life, like for example, you have to be around them, but when you're around them, they're always so negative, and, like, that's, like, the main problem, I feel like, because there's a net, my mother, she's just very negative, and it just affects me a lot. And well, like, here's the thing, you're believing what she's saying is true, even though you know it's not. I'm going to repeat that again, so that this gets really clear for you. 
you're believing what she's saying even though you know it's not true. So for instance, you just can't do anything right. That type of sentence, you know, isn't true, but after you hear it enough times, it makes you feel that it is true. What I want to suggest to you really is when she says things that make you uncomfortable outside of taking out the trash or doing something that, you know, you can't get out of in your head, make it into something silly. So for instance, pretend that you're watching a cartoon and there is uh, the wolf who's talking to the sheep. And the sheep is just going, "Uh uh-huh, 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 I'm doing it, uh uh-huh. But in their head and in your head, it's almost like that big bubble. You could see them saying, okay, I hear you. I don't have to pay attention, but I hear you. Uh, Okay. Okay. Start turning it around so that you are more in charge of you. You start to feel as if your worth has value because it does. And something you want to think about here, your mom's not intentionally trying to be mean. She's not in a good place herself. You realize that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. Switch Um, it around for yourself. It will make a difference. Thanks so much for calling. Okay, have a good one. I'll call you back again for sure. All right, thanks. I know we have another caller. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able. Yes, okay, we're going to squeeze in the time here. (laughs) Cheryl, are you still there? Yes, I am. Hello, how are you? I'm great, honey. Did you have a specific message? My guy in the uh, control room says, hurry up. (laughs) Oh, um, well, I'm married 34 years to the same man. He's a good man, but I feel very lonely. Um, We don't have any kind of a real relationship. We're just sticking it out for the the two boys, you know, our sons. And I just wanted to see if... You know, bottom, bottom line, your bottom line, what I get is, for a very long time now, you've been more, we'll say, friends and roommates than anything else. I want to make a Correct. suggestion here. After the show, go ahead and text me, and I will give you a better response. Five six one seven five five two one six six. And uh, just so those people listening are aware, that is the phone number you can also call to schedule a private session. But Cheryl. Go ahead and text me, and I will talk to you a little bit more. I have seven five five two one six six. What was the first part? Five six one. Oh, five six one. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, honey. And for the rest of you listening in, I thank you so much for tuning in this evening, and I wish you a wonderful week. Remember, you are in charge of you. Be that little kid. Get excited about your life. If you don't like it, change it. Bye bye. Remember to tune in every Tuesday on WNN at 9 p.m. for more peace, inspiration, and psychic phenomena with Empowerment Psychic Hallie Elise, Top 100 Psychic. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out of pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care Inc. at 954 717 7027. License 2009096. 
This is your empowerment psychic, Hallie Elise, one of the top 100 psychics in America. For over 30 years, I have offered psychic readings, programs, spiritual guidance, and other life skill techniques. 